Welcome back to the show. I do hope you enjoyed that Vox Populi on Bullet Train, the private screening. It was a great time. It was a fun time. Today on my sit here on Flick Chat, I have like one of the fast rising actors in the country. I mean, as far as Gen Z is concerned. This babe is like leading, you know, I mean, beautiful, smart, great and talented. The amazing Jael Damina. Hi. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. First of all, your outfit. I mean, it's giving colors, it's giving, you know, I mean, what's the inspiration for the outfit today? Um, I just wanted to be comfortable, but at the same time, stylish. Mm. So I was like, Plus the weather. It's yes, kinda, it's kind of chilly too. Yeah. So, yeah. Amazing. Thank you for coming. Thank hey. you. So, yes, where do we start from? Let's talk about Best Friends in the World, of course. It's crazy how that series, you know, mm. just blew out of proportion. Yes. I understand you were one of the three co-founders of Neptune Studios, right? Yes. And of course, a lead character in Best Friends in the World. Mm -hmm. So when you started off this project, did you think that it was going to be this big? Honestly. Honestly, when we started this project, mm -hmm. I wasn't an actor, like acting wasn't my thing. So I was just like, oh, I'm just doing this as a favorite to my sisters. <laughs> so I was like, I'm probably going to make this like thing flop because my acting is terrible. I was like, if we get 100 views, whoa, thank the Lord. That was like my whole attitude towards it. So when the views started flying, we're like 500,000. Like, well, I was watching this. Who's watching this short film? Like, this is not what we expected at all. It was really like shocking to see the reception and like mm -hmm. the good comments. I was expecting like backlash. People, I was expecting people to be like, oh, acting is terrible. Like, oh my God, she's so good. And like, she's pretty. I was like. And then the oh social media following started. Yes, yes. Like my Instagram followers ran it didn't even like walk it ran like it was just going really quick i think i wasn't really prepared mm. for how fast it was mm. going to like go mm. but like so looking really at it now do you think where you are now are you are you prepared for all that is coming are you how are you handling it <sighs> seeing that i mean at the time you were not exactly prepared how are you handling it now i think now it's kind of just really relying on the support of my like family mm. and friends mm. and kind of just Drawing inspiration from other yeah. people who have already made it, mm -hmm. seeing how they're coping, mm -hmm. trying to adjust according to how mm -hmm. I can cope as well. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty much it. And then, of course, leaning on the help of God, because yeah. that. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Because, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Fun like, fact, she's a preacher's kid. Yes, yeah. yes, my dad's gear. a pastor. So I think all that just really helped mm -hmm. me stay mm -hmm. grounded and, you know, focused on my. Let's, let's even talk about that. Being that your dad is like one of, I think, one of the most successful pastors we have in this country at the time. Mm -hmm. was, uh, I mean, were there limitations to that? Like, did people kind of attribute, you know, your success, you know, to that? Or have people in any way say, oh, she's a pa why is she doing that? She's a pastor's kid. Why would she do that? You know, why is she, yeah. you know, why yeah. is she acting like that? Why is she dressed like that? Mm -hmm. You know, any of those kind of things. People, Does it ever happen? Yes, yeah. it happens a lot. Well, it happened a lot. It still kind of happens, but not as much. People definitely say, oh, you know, they're using their dad's money to succeed. It's because he's connected. They don't really attribute our success to our hard work, which is really frustrating. Mm -hmm. And of course, definitely, Dressing wise, they're really like, oh, you shouldn't be wearing this. It's too short. It's mm. too revealing. It's too... And it's like, okay. Mm. And of course, I try my best to stay as mm. moderate as possible because I definitely want to give a positive message mm. to the people who are watching and mm. following me. Mm. So it's, it's, it's a challenge trying mm. to stay a good role model yeah. for people. But, yeah. you know, yeah. I'm handling What would you say has been your most challenging um, episode on Best Friends in the World? Or a scene Ooh. or something that was very challenging for you? I think as a whole, the emotional parts of Best Friends in the World were like the most challenging because mm. I suck at crying on cue. <laughs> I was so bad. Like all my other co-actors, a lot of them can cry on cue. Like it's mm. so easy for them. Just like action is like tears. Yeah. But remember it's like 10 <laughs> hours of doing like, okay, think of something sad. Your dog died. Like plane crash. Like there's so many scenarios oh I have to think of to brain. prep. Plane crash. Yeah. Why are you thinking about plane crash? <laughs> For what? me, I have to like really think of like the deepest, saddest things before like tears flow. And that's like after like six hours of waiting on set. She said play crash. I'm like, what? No, okay, I think that's a bit extra. But okay, okay, I hear you. Um, relationship now with your sisters. Mm -hmm. I mean, it looks all rosy and all beautiful, you mm -hmm. know, from outside. Mm -hmm. But I know there could be fights, you know, I don't want you doing that. You shouldn't be doing this, especially because like, yeah. like you're the youngest of, yeah. you know, all three of you. Mm -hmm. So I mean, co-handling this um, um, media space at the time, even currently, I mean, what has been like your most challenging processes, or most challenging things to do as sisters handling a business like that? I think for the parts that involve me and my sisters, because some parts don't involve mm -hmm. me, I think it's mostly 
handling on set stuff while mm. we're shooting, just mm. the whole navigating, oh, mm. you have this scene, you're late, you're not prepped for this scene. Mm. And sometimes it can get frustrating with the other co-actors cool mm -hmm. who are just like, no one's ready mm -hmm. for a certain scene. So I think it's just really prepping for a scene mm. that's the most challenging mm. when it comes to three of us. Okay, F fair enough, fair yeah. enough. Now let's even talk about, you know, the reception of this. I and mean, we've talked about how great the numbers have done. What's mm. the highest number so far? I think we're about 10 million views. What? Yeah. Yeah. What? Mm -hmm. I swear, I didn't know. I didn't yeah. know. I was thinking like maybe four million, five million? Yeah, 10, 10 million, million first episode. episode, yeah. Yo, mm -hmm. that is insane. Yes. I also know that you're, I mean, you're rounded up the, um, your um, high school. Yes. The entire high school. This is the last episode that we yeah. the entire cultural thing. It was quite emotional. Yeah. There's so much to talk about you guys when we are back from this break. It is still Flickchat here on Popcorn 10 on Popcorn TV, 189. See you in a GP.